Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm James Shakeshaft. And I am Alistair Beckett King. And we have another returning guest law person. Yep. It's Sunil Patel. If the listeners haven't seen what Sunil looks like, just picture a luxurious cat. Yes, he's got some of the cat about him. He's graceful, but lazy. <laughs> As opposed to if you were to say he was quite doggy, you'd mean he was stupid and eager. Absolutely, he's nothing like a dog. If there's one thing Sunil's not, it's loyal. (laughs) Let's hear the episode. Alistair. James. How are you? I'm all right. A little bit tired. Yes. I tried to go for a jog and it just turned into a walk. Have you had that? Oh. When a jog degenerates into just perambulation? I could barely jog. I could, I'm doing that couch to 5k thing and I'm still on like the second level. That's the ice one, isn't it? And then <laughs> yeah. after that, it's like a then desert. desert. And then it's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, underwater. I hate the underwater one. That's the worst. But, Alistair, yep. we'll discuss that further later. First of all... I've got a guest law person. It's a returning guest law person, no less. Oh, yeah? Have a little look at your Skype screen. It's only Sunil Patel. Hello. Hello. Can you see me waving at you on the Skype screen? Yeah, I can. I can see you waving. Oh, sorry, I should wave back. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) I forgot that you could see me. Oh, That's right. So glad you're available at short notice, Sunil. Oh, less than 12 hours notice. <laughs> less than 12 hours notice. I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't undermine you this early No, on. no, no, it's all right. I, I find it uh, very easy to process the information uh, quickly needed to make this podcast a success. <laughs> Is that, are you happy with that? Is that what you wanted? <laughs> yeah, I was sent reading. I forgot there's reading for this podcast, isn't there? Oh, big time. There's a reading list for any conversation with me. I can't believe you haven't been doing the prep work. <laughs> I'm stunned at the amount of, like, oh, Old books you two sent, sort of end up with. Ah, uh, mate, this one. The one that I sent you stuff from is Haunted Inns yeah. by Mark Alexander. Uh, this is a real treat. How much it's, was it? Was it obviously secondhand? I think it's about £8. But yeah, this is 1973. Oh. And it's got photograph pages in the middle. If you want to keep Ooh. hold of that, it could be worth something. Well, it's worth £8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all, um, it's all fo- black and white photos yeah. of 70s pubs. Oh. And it is the past. Can you see that? Do they ever capture photos of ghosts in it? No. Okay. <laughs> There's a guy pointing at where a ghost was. <laughs> oh, he's in the 70s. That's a mock neck jumper. It looks like a French philosopher pointing at a cupboard. <laughs> Saying that's where the ghost was. That's a bone. That's an arm. That's an arm. That's a skeleton's arm. That's an arm. Oh. A withered arm. I think yeah. it's a child's withered arm. It was a different time in the 70s. <laughs> it was normal to have a child's withered arm in a pub. Everyone thought it was a laugh. Look at that landlord. He hasn't even put his fag out to have that picture taken. It's a shame the listeners can't see that, but that's um, that's an elderly gent having a fag. Behind the bar. Behind the bar, I... where you're not supposed to drink or smoke. There's another guy pointing at where a, fo- a ghost was. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these are definitely photographs of, um, of burly men pointing at nothing. Just pointing. I'm going to see how much that book is. I'm intrigued. Classic pointing. Haunted Inns. I think if I got hold of every coffee and burnt it, it would increase the value of yours. Oh, thanks. Pleasure. An absolute pleasure. You get a Goldfinger. <laughs> is that what their plot of Goldfinger? Yeah, nobody apart from me is really interested, but I think it's quite an interesting plan. We forget that we think his plan was to uh, invade Fort Knox somehow and steal, but you can't. So his plan is to set up a nuclear bomb there, or some kind of dirty bomb. So it's all irradiated, so... Um, so nobody can use the gold in Fort Knox, meaning that his gold massively increases in value. Very clever. It's quite a good plan. Yeah. That is, yeah. And you could do that with books from the 70s. <laughs> oh, Mark Alexander has actually followed it up with a book called Haunted Churches and Abbeys of Britain. Oh, what? There's a sequel? And A Ghostly Guide to Britain's Haunted Stately Homes. He very much likes a the theme, doesn't he? Yeah, Alexander was not sleeping on ghostly locations. <laughs> he is not. Oh, he's still got, yeah, he's still writing. Is he? Enchanted Britain, mystic, mystical sites in rural England. Ooh. I'm sorry to turn this whole episode into an advert for this writer. No, I can't wait to see photographs of people pointing at trees and hills. Some grass. I mean, that was published last year. It's available on Kindle. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Has it got a photo section in the middle? Though, yeah, you can't have the, the, th- the slightly thicker pages of the photo section no. on a Kindle. You can't replicate that. No. You can just have a digital. Yep, yep. Photo. You can replicate that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's something of our era to be 
to go to the local WH Smiths to find the movie novelizations to look at the photos in the middle of the books, isn't it? That's very much. Oh, I see. Is that just literally just me? I always hated whenever a paperback had now a major motion picture, which for some reason is the only way they phrased it. Yes. It always said exactly that. I hated that. I felt like that had somehow uh, ruined the book. Yeah, it looks like you're reading it because it's a film. Any edition of a story which is like they use the cover of the film is just terrible. You don't want that in your collection. I think I'm exposing my illiteracy here because I'm talking about like The Goonies, the book of the film, whereas you're talking about like literary works that have been adapted. Jane Eyre. (laughs) Never going to read it. I prefer to watch the film of some of those. The child Jane Eyre, when she's a kid, is just the best character in literature. Really? Why? Uh, Because she's, yeah, because she's just, everyone's constantly unfair to her and she's furious and keeps pointing it out and sticking up for herself. But then she grows up and becomes terribly humble and just suffers life's blows. Uh, And it's like, no, I want a time-travelling child Jane Eyre to solve mysteries. No, I want those diamonds polished. I want those diamonds (laughs) polished into humble, humble adults. (laughs) Rub that precociousness out of you. Get it out. Yes, but Alistair, I didn't call up Sunil at 4am this morning just to chat to you about <laughs> gaps. No, you, you didn't. I called him about something else. You'd found something in a book. I'd found some wonderful pictures of men pointing in a book. <laughs> no, I found a, I found an excellent ghost story from the city. Is it a city? Of Bath. It is a city. It's got a cathedral, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like just a household object, but it's actually a city. <laughs> Do you think they had jokes made about it when it was first incorporated as a city? Was everyone going like, oh, that sounds like a household object? <laughs> In 1650 yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like I think a farmer in 1650 would have just been saying, oh, it sounds like a normal household object. Not in my house. I'm a farmer for 1650. <laughs> yeah, it could possibly. Yeah. It could be the longest running dad joke of all time. <laughs> to mistake my hometown for uh, a bath full of water. A big old basin. <laughs> this is a story I'd never heard, though, the one you showed me. Do you know the pub? I hadn't noticed it until I went on Street View and I was like, oh, of course, that pub. This is the Garrick's Head pub, which is next door to the... Is it the Garrick Theatre that is next door to? It's the Theatre Royal, so it's a very sort Theatre of... Royal. Um, it's full of, full of lovies, that kind of... Uh, uh, named after the actor Garrick, I was about to ask. Yeah. But it, yes, I guess it is. It David is, yes. Garrick, yes. Yeah. Who I... I randomly read a tweet. From Garrick. Yeah. It's very big on Twitter. Because you've got to interact with the fans directly these days. After you die, you leave a bot behind for Twitter. <laughs> According to this tweet, I couldn't be bothered to verify it, um, but he developed a special hairpiece for when he played Hamlet. He had a pneumatic wig so that his hair would stand up on end when he saw the ghost. Really? Yeah. That's, that's not, beautiful. That's isn't not it? acting. That's not acting. <laughs> was... That's effects, though. <laughs> what is acting, though? <laughs> but the, and then and then I was like, and then obviously because he's he's related to this tale, so I did a bit of research on him, and it's like it's all about how he was quite subtle and would underplay things compared to the previous age. Like he had a pneumatic what? wig. There isn't a stage actor in the history of the world that has underplayed things. <laughs> Yeah, but not all of them had four stagehands pumping up their wig before. <laughs> that, was, that was early CGI. People must have been complaining about it, saying it, it, it dis- detracts from the magic. But have you read the novelisation? Oh. <laughs> I'm imagining Andy Circus now playing the wig, <laughs> clinging onto Benedict Cumberbatch's head. Yes, yeah, so that, that pub, the Garrick's Head and the Theatre yeah. Royal, used to be one house which was a chap called Bo Nash, which now I say it out loud sounds a bit sillier than I'd realise when reading it down. <laughs> but that is an enormous that is an enormous building. It is. Yeah, have. a full theatre. Like the Theatre Royal's huge. So his house was that and the pub next door. That's mad. Yeah. That's He's got, he, was origi- he was born Richard Nash in Swansea in Wales. Yeah. And he took the nickname Bo and he was... He's the guy who put Bath on the map. Yeah, I read it. I don't, this is a little history I'd never knew. I didn't know that... There's What I like about Mark Alexander's mm-hmm. writing uh, is the level of detail he puts into it, saying, like, so this Bo Nash guy, his dad made his money because he had an interest in a profitable greenhouse. Yeah, I tried to find out what that meant, and I, I can't. I mean, <laughs> you can make your money any old way back then, couldn't you? Yeah. Turnips. I've grown too many turnips, and now I'm rich. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd heard the name of this guy. I never knew what he did exactly in Bath. Have you heard of Bo Nash, Alistair? Hirsch, I've heard or? the name. Absolutely not. Oh, no, I, I, I genu- I would have pitched him as a sort of late mm. bluesman. Circa Muddy Waters era. Yeah. You know, maybe going electric, maybe touring the UK. He was an 18th century dandy. <laughs> mm. But he came from a lowly background. All his dad had was a greenhouse, it seemed. <laughs> Not even the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just had an interest in it. He was just interested yeah. in it. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in a lot of stuff. It really pays off, eh? He, of of yeah. his father, he said, I seldom mention my father and company, not because I have any reason to be ashamed of him, but because he has some reason to be ashamed of me. What a quip. Bon mot. What a bon mot that is. <laughs> that is a bon mot. His, apparently, his Bon Mots were famous and people would repeat them at parties. Wow. Like Oscar Wilde. Do or we like still repeat whenever those? anyone says, oh, I read this on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the story about Oscar Wilde getting on the train? Uh, no. Saying goodbye to his friends. So, uh, so you know, talking to his friends out the window of the train, and he said, you know, one of these classic Wildean Bon Mots to each one of them, just a very witty little piece of advice. Uh, and the train was about to pull out, but then it was delayed for 15 minutes. Oh. And they all realised that he'd prepared them. Because he didn't have anything else to say, so he just sat down and sort of closed the window and read his <laughs> newspaper and ignored them for the remaining 15 minutes. Oh. So it just goes to show that people used to work up their material. Yeah, Even yeah, Oscar yeah. Wilde used to work on his bits. What, what I like about that whole anecdote uh, was that you very subtly uh, let on that both uh, James and I have been mispronouncing Bon Mo. <laughs> uh, you call it Bon Mo, probably fuming all the way that we've been calling it Bon Mots. Sorry, I had like ass- a pair of plebs. I had assumed that we all we were all saying Bon Mot, ironically. Oh, uh, and it just naturally came out the I, uh, I just unquote, think it, correct way. I just think it sounds better, Bon Mot. <laughs> Actually, I, and I read this on Twitter the other day. You should never make fun of someone for mispronouncing a word because it means that they learned it in a book. Yeah, like a nerd. And in my case, that book was the novelization of The Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> like, not why you can't just worship books. Not all books are good. You can't be like, "Well done for reading a book." Yeah, Hitler wrote a book. <laughs> Hitler wrote a book. <laughs> there are so many excertable bits for this episode already. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bo Nash, Bo Nash. I keep it sounds like I'm saying Bone Ash. Oh yeah, a potent ingredient. His name is Bo, like Bo Bridges, and Nash, Nash like, Bridges. Oh, oh. oh, what a bon mot! I'll stop recording now. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll I'll stop recording for all of us. <laughs> Bo Nash. He lived so well when he was studying law. His fellow students thought. Because they had no obvious way that he was getting his money, they thought he might have been a highwayman. Ooh, but he was—he right. was a professional gambler. Really? Yeah. He used—he made his money at the cards. Then you used to be a professional gambler, Sunil. So I did, but I was, wasn't very good at it, and I certainly wasn't wearing fine clothes because of it. <laughs> I wasn't. I mean, you're looking great today. Up. I'm wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm impressed it's a step up from what i've seen in the ah, past i'm glad right, i see <laughs> that isn't true I've, I've never seen you looking less than diamond sharp yeah no i but yes to answer your question i was a professional gambler but i didn't i wasn't very good at it semi-pro uh, you had an interest, had an interest in professional yeah. gambling uh it doesn't say i read a bit that he invented his own gambling game but i can't find what it was but that seems dodgy oh, it does seem dodgy I wouldn't play anyone's game if they said they'd invented it he was quite the celebrity of his time though he actually at the time when the fashion was to have a white wig he wore a black wig ooh with a white hat ooh he's kind of a bit of a bad boy and somehow he got himself the job of the assistant to the Master of Ceremonies of Bath. Assistant to the Master Assistant of to the Master of Ceremonies of Bath. And that MC was killed in a duel and he took over. Mm, wow. There is a lot, I don't know a lot. There is a lot of violence in that world. It's the, fi- the 50 cent of his day. <laughs> Which would be about what? Three pence in those days? What's the equivalent? Yeah, D. Something with D in it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, so he became the, um, the, the Master of Ceremonies of Bath. And, I mean, all these words mean different things now. That's the problem. I'm just imagining him coming out to the people of Bath being like, we're drinking tonight. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, is anyone single? Yeah? I'm imagining him in a bath as well. <laughs> Shout out to DJ Toilet Duck. The master of bath ceremonies would just bring out maybe a tray of soaps and sponges. A loofah. Is matey. 
Bath was obviously, as we talked about before with you, was quite a famous spa town by the Romans, apparently yes. discovered by King Bladard. Yeah. Oh, yes, but that's what we talked about, yeah. We're now into the 1700, well, the year 1700, and Bath... Sounds like a party town. Well, no, this time now. Bath was not, it was not, it was, it fallen on hard times. It was seen as a bit of a shoddy uh. city or town, whatever it was at that really? stage. Yes. Queen Anne visited, mm. and it started to get a little bit more famous, and Nash took this opportunity as the master of ceremonies. He ordered massive balls with all of society to come to. <laughs> lol, lol. Uh, Alistair, jump in there. He said massive balls. I can see him smiling, and that's very unlike him. It's, it, well, it's also that he ordered them. That's like he wrote off. That's what I liked about that. So, so he put these massive balls on. That's what I didn't want to say. That's why I had to say ordered massive balls, but that sounds bad. But So he put these massive balls on and invited... All the society people, and he would be a bit of a matchmaker. He got the buildings to be all done up really fancy, ordered these big architectural projects to go on. You know yeah. what Bath looks like now? Yeah. That's that's because of him, because of Bo Nash. So he gentrified the whole place. He loved gambling, though, and he had his own little gambling right. club in his house, which is now the Garrick's Head. The laws changed about gambling, and he started to lose quite a lot of money. He, in fact, died penniless. Bath gave him, like, a, a big state, almost state funeral, like a big fancy funeral, yeah. but he was buried yeah. in a pauper's grave. Can I just read out this sentence I found on Wikipedia? Yes. So it says, Nash here, it says, Nash was a notorious gambler who was forced to move in with his mistress, uh, Juliana Popjoy, <laughs> due to his debts. But then they separated, yeah. and it says, upon their separation... Popjoy was so distraught, she spent the majority of her remaining days living in a large, hollowed-out tree. <laughs> yep. In a tree? 30 to 40 years she lived in that tree. Shortly before her death, she moved out of the tree and back to her home where she died. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a funny sentence. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, we're just laughing at someone's death. Yeah, the surname Popjoy set me up for a much more light-hearted yeah, escapade. We've got Popjoy, hollowed out tree, and then death. <laughs> Poor woman. That's so sad, though, isn't it? I mean, he must have been pretty charming. She said that she never wanted to sleep in a bed again. That's a, And I thought, you don't need to move into a tree to do that. Get a beanbag. People were so much more melodramatic back then. Yeah. And it was like 30 to 40 years she lived in that tree. I wish I had a rich mistress. I wish I had a big tree. <laughs> Alistair? <laughs> no, I'm, what I'm, do you hope for? You're fine. Ma you're fine. <laughs> Maybe an interest in a greenhouse to the... <laughs> Massive balls. Well, I've ordered them. <laughs> Still waiting. You'll notice that it's called the Garrick's Head Pub, not the Nash's Head Pub. Yeah. He lost his house at Cards to David Garrick. Oh. The actor. The, oh, the wig guy. The wig guy. Yeah, the wig yeah. guy. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> you know actors often think you know going up for auditions you know how do i dress what do i take with me oh yeah where are the shoes of the character yeah should i be wearing the shoes of the character do i need a, a pneumatic hairpiece to lift up <laughs> just to emphasize the right line turn up for an advert casting like everyone in there has got pneumatic wigs on <laughs> like, uh, they've all thought of it I, I did a um i did an audition a couple of days ago for a stupid man sitting on toilet <laughs> <laughs> which i think was that was one of your reviews in edinburgh wasn't it <laughs> just word for word what are, the, what are the chances two stars uh well i wish i could i wish i could pull off just sitting on a toilet for an hour as an edinburgh show <laughs> It's got to be stupid, man, so it's on toilet. We don't want to watch a sophisticated, metropolitan, <laughs> liberal elite <laughs> sitting on a toilet with vegan toilet paper. Not interested. I'll wear a flat cap. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ghost? So, ghosts. <laughs> yeah. You wanted them, I'll bring them. So when it was a gambling house, a gambler realised that one of the people he was sat playing cards with was his wife's lover. So, hang on, who owned the house now? This is still Garrick's house. This is when it was Nash's gambling club. Oh, right. And he leapt on the man in a frenzy and stabbed him to death. Right. And the the wife in question was there, and she was so distraught by mm. witnessing this, she ran upstairs and threw herself out the window, also to her death. A lot of women getting a raw deal. Maybe she was hoping there would be a tree there, and she could just whoop, move straight in. <laughs> but no. 
she died. Oh dear. What, just falling out of a first floor window? No, like she went right up to the top probably. Oh, did she? All right, fair play. Yeah. You could drown in a puddle. <laughs> There's another ghost. I, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't get to the ghost, James. The, those, the, you those, send us any ghosts, those yeah. two ghosts want the house. Oh, okay. The, Carry on. Oh, well, the woman and yeah, the lad. Don't know what they do. They just yeah. knock around. Like, well, not knock around, because that's the next ghost, the knocker. Well, he just knocks on stuff. Well, yeah, well, apparently the landlord was telling Mark Alexander when he would have people round for dinner, that he would hear a knocking on the dining room door, and if someone went up to answer it, there'd be no one there. And then when he sat back down at the table, the knocking would start again. So he'd just say, come in, and the knocking would stop. Ooh. Just being polite. Just say, come in the first time. Then you don't have to get up, is what I think. Another ghost that the landlord describes is that of a practical joker who hides his cufflinks. Hides the landlord's cufflinks? Yes. Not yeah. his own cufflinks. Not ghost cufflinks. Not his ghostly cufflinks. No. Like, where are my cufflinks? So like, we're not bothered. Yeah. <laughs> get out of here, ghostly beetle. All these things that the landlord calls practical jokes are just like, would would make me f- my pants if they happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> what if you lost your cufflinks? Well, well, no, I would be like, all right, if someone if a ghost has had my cufflinks away, I wouldn't. I'd move out. Like, <laughs> but, like practical jokes are basically in the eye of the the the, the jokey, aren't they? Essentially, to mm. decide if it's a joke or not. And this landlord seems well up for this. This is one of the jokes he describes. Um, I'm going to read the quote here. My wife and I were sitting in our lounge watching television one evening. Suddenly I saw two candles rise from their holders on the sideboard. They shot through the air, just missed my wife's head and fell down in front of her. This was absolute fact. Candles don't normally jump into the air. Absolutely (laughs) hilarious. Anyway, we left them where they'd fallen until the morning. That's a remarkable uh, practical joke. None of that is a joke, whether done by a ghost or not. I know. Sunil, if you came out in, at, at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival with two <laughs> candles, lifted them up and threw them towards the audience and then left them there till the next day, that's three stars of three best, stars, isn't it? It's three not, stars minimum. <laughs> dep- it, I think it depends on the venue. A free fringe venue, you're getting nothing. But if you did it in somewhere that implies it's very clever comedy, exactly like that sort of London comedy, yeah, I think exactly. you'd be on for a Soho theatre run. And this last one, I think, this last joke could be part of your... One man show, okay. Stupid Man Sits on Toilet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so after the bar closed, the staff were having a drink and the barmaids went to nip to the loo. And when she came back, she was confused that the landlord's wife was in the room and she said that she thought she'd heard her in the toilet next to her, in the stall next to her. Doing what? Shutting the door and flush- flushing the loo. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's what she says, but probably trumping, isn't it? Uh, is this, does she think it's a practical joke, this woman, or is she just scared it, This is all reported by the landlord, Mad. and he says, that's another one of the jokes. That's not a joke, obviously. <laughs> that's not a joke. Um, unless you did it at the start of the show, and then at the end, like, it would be a callback yeah. to flush the toilet again. <laughs> yeah. But how would a ghost from, like, the 16th or the 17th century know even how to use a, a flushing toilet? They'd be baff... It'd be incredibly futuristic. Very good point. It's like me yeah. trying to haunt a teleporter. I wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> Start bashing the buttons. <laughs> I'd look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, good point, I guess. There's a lot of sort of ghosts knocking about with stuff that's like they wouldn't know what to do with. So Yeah, if I were if I were a Victorian ghost or something, I'd just be going I'd just be looking at phones and uh, Nintendo yeah, yeah. switches going like, Wow, yeah. what's that? Are ghosts sentient? Oh, I don't know. They evidently need the loo. Uh, the, the two competing theories about ghosts, well, the three competing theories, if we include they don't exist, <laughs> are the recording theory, where ghosts are some kind of impression made by things that happened and they repeat. Yeah. And then the other one is that they are trapped spirits, where the soul of a person is trapped and in which a Which one do you think? I, the, the recording one is more plausible, because I don't think the soul exists, but I, in reality, I don't think any ghosts exist. Sorry, at this point in the podcast, to ruin the whole premise. Bombshell, real bombshell. I don't think oh, any God. ghosts exist. <laughs> Well, this maybe is another. This is another ghost story, which maybe implies that they do, if not understand the modern world, they are very much like me when I've got a wireless printer that won't connect. In 1964, the landlord reported that the cash register, which was half a hundred weight, which I guess is fifty weight, yep. was hurled across the bar into a chair, smashing it. Wow! So right. the ghost hates chairs, and he'll use whatever he can lay his hands on to <laughs> smash them. That's quite scary. Yeah, that is frightening. What, what is a hundred weight? Ton? Yep, I've, I've, I've no ton? idea. Heavy. Hundred weight is a hundred. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. <laughs> All right, guys, hold on, guys. Let me Google it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the old till, according to this, weighed twenty-five kilos, which is half a hundred weight. Whew. Which is just why would you call fifty kilos a hundred weight? Yeah, that's not. That's twice as much as it. 
is. Absolutely infuriating imperial measurements. Yep, can't stand them. Oh, here we go. Uh, the British hundred weight is 112 pounds, you pieces of... <laughs> <laughs> but what's a baker's hundred weight? It's going to be just slightly more. Yeah, it's seven that muffins. And the weight of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the final ghost is that of a grey lady who also haunts the theatre... And she's got a lovely smell. Yeah, that sounds like a sweet... That's like a nice ghost, but no no one's telling me any information about her. They're just like, oh, there's also the grey lady. Yeah, she smells of jasmine. Oh. It, that is annoying, isn't it? Because if you spend your time flinging tills across uh, a bar, mm. everybody's yeah. paying attention. Mm. If all you do is produce a, a pleasant yeah. jasmine scent. Sounds like my Twitter profile. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to more loud mouths. It's a shame that the listeners couldn't see you removing your glasses in order to put on sunglasses, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> and once a clock struck during a play when it wasn't supposed to, that's the last ghost. Do people listen to this podcast for ghost stories? Probably not from this point onwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is all fascinating stuff, because the Garrick's head... Uh, what I liked about the Garrick's head is that it, the lad who owned it, Garrick, he built a tunnel going straight into the sides of the of the performance space at the Theatre Royal, uh, the lazy from, actor he was. From his house. But that's quite interesting, because what sort of weird stuff was down there? So Garrick could go from his house mm. to the theatre via tunnel? He could go no, literally onto the stage via a tunnel. Oh, so he didn't have so to talk to his fans or do any signings and stuff afterwards? Yeah, he could just... Yeah, go off just straight to a sitting room. He could get straight up from a nap mm. and be performing. Get the wig on. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be going in the tunnel with a pneumatic wig. That's a, that's a, a headroom risk, surely. Wake me when the wig is half pumped. <laughs> <laughs> See, if they unblocked that tunnel, I would like to go and visit that. That sounds quite interesting. Because I've like, oh, yeah. I've been in, the, I've actually performed at the Euston of Theatre, which is part of the Theatre Royal. But I've never actually. Mm. Uh, yeah, I played uh, Romeo. Really? And what? <laughs> I was trying to think of something funny. I was trying to think of something funny where Romeo was just the dog. Twenty-one seconds to go. <laughs> the um. The so solid crew biopic. I played Romeo. The so solid crew story. I does sound like an extremely short play, though. <laughs> A lot of effort to go to. <laughs> right then. Sunil, hello. We're gonna get we're gonna get scored now by Alistair. How are you feeling going into it? Great. Am I aiming for a high or a low score? We want we want fives across the board. Of course, a high score. <laughs> it's not darts. <laughs> no, go- oh, sorry. Generally, a high score is what you would aim for. This yeah. is why you were a bad professional no. gambler. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want more or less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my aim is to get rid of it all. Yeah. <laughs> but my cards are the furthest away from twenty-one. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be weighed down by all these chips. <laughs> Flinging them around. <laughs> You've got a, a wrong idea of me as a professional gambler. I wasn't in a casino wearing it. It was a cravat <laughs> flinging chips around. Let's go for Supernatural, first of all. How many points would I give this for Supernatural? No, we've got to get them off Alistair. You've yeah, listened right. to the podcast. Yeah. You've listened to a third of one of the podcasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will provide the scoring because I... Why do you get to be in charge of this? Because I'm independent. I'm objective when it comes to Bath and its haunting. We come up with the categories and he gives us the score. This is actually the first time we've explained it, to be honest. Yeah, that... It, it's sort of been inferred before. It hasn't caused any confusion with any previous guest or listener, I just have to say. I just don't understand why James has no authority over these scores. Well, no, we're going to argue. Oh, there you go. Go for it. <laughs> it's a podcast. He's not just going to go three. Okay, next one. <laughs> I thought he was some sort of wise figure watching over us as we discuss ghosts and then throwing us scores. It's three. Move on. (laughs) Done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, we've got ghosts chucking hundredweight, however, half a hundredweight. Which is half the amount you would expect it to be. We got that. We got uh, the smell of jasmine. Mm. Some unspecific lover's ghosts and... Uh, I've forgotten the last one. You know there's been a lot of ghosts when I can clearly hear the sound of you flipping pages frantically trying to uh, remember which ghosts we covered. <laughs> toilet toilet ghost. <laughs> that's a category. <laughs> oh, that's a I'm not that impressed with the, the unmemorable ghosts of this. I, th- oh, I can see you looking at me sad and angry simultaneously. Me? What, Sunil? No, can Sunil you? looks fine. Sunil looks oh, fine. Great. Sunil three. looks standard yeah. Sunil. But... <laughs> I don't think I've seen you have any facial expressions. Uh, even without the beard, it, it, it's still giving nothing away. They're very subtle. That's why I get castings for 
<laughs> roles such as stupid man on toy. <laughs> How are you supposed to look stupid? You have to be subtle about it. In words, it's, it's astonishing my agent has placed me in the firing line of roles such as stupid man on toilet, really. You were almost there, but we couldn't imagine you on a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, it's all right, a four. Yes. Well done, James. You've negotiated me. Yes. In. I'm not yes. I'm not completely sure how, but four, four out of five, there were a lot of ghosts. And of course, these yes. points do mean prizes at the end. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Better be a bag of, like, mini Mars bars at the end of it for me if I get, reach a certain threshold. Next category, <laughs> naming. We've got Bo Nash. Great. We've got Juliana Popjoy. Oh, yeah. Grey Lady. Grey Lady. Brilliant. Garrick, the actor. Garrick is a good name. David Garrick. Dave Garrick. Dave Garrick. D- Dave Garrick. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Welch, the Mr. landlord. Mr. and Mrs. Welch. Mm-hmm. I Welch. think it's a, f- I think it's a four out of five, <laughs> and two of those are for Popjoy, and two of those are for Bo Nash, and the rest of them have not pulled their weight. Okay, then I've just seen. Are, are you about to produce something spectacular? I've seen one more name. It's the name of the reporter. Who reported the story yes. of the of the cash register getting thrown across the room? Okay, his name was John Duller. It's three out of five. Ah. It's, it's gone down to uh, it's, it's gone down to a three out of five. Isn't there it? For names. Underwhelming, isn't it? Oh, we're not doing well here, Sunil. You're not really arguing this up. Oh, I thought I was leaving it to you. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right, let's go. Come on, let's let's no, the ramp format, it up. The format of the podcast is you're supposed to argue in favour of. All right, let's get the, the big stories. guns out. Here we go. Uh, next category, the past. It was in the past. Because this all takes place in the past. It all unambiguously <laughs> takes place in the past. Five out of five for that one. Yeah, I mean, I f- yes. it feels like you're not in keeping with the spirit of the podcast, <laughs> but I-, I can't fault you there. It did happen in the Thank past. You. Thank oh, you. Oh, that was much. easy. Well done. <laughs> the what last category is showmanship. Pizzazz. Yeah, the, there's a lot of that. Isn't there? Uh, a pneumatic wig? I just can't oh, get yeah, over yeah, a pneumatic yeah. wig. That is the height. He showmanshipped up a city. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Massive balls. Let's not forget the showmanship yeah. of these spurned women in these stories. Throwing themselves off buildings, living in trees. Living in a tree for 30 <laughs> to 40 years. Everyone was at it back then. They were just doing mad they, stuff. They really followed through on their threats. Yeah. We've got to it do was something. all for show back then. So... That, that said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the guys just pointing into corners. I'm not sure they were oh. quite as snazzy as they could have been. Oh. the photographs you showed me do not scream pizzazz. It's not the first word. But, but that it's leaps a to sober mind. examination of yeah. the past. That's what's. That's where some pizzazz might have I been. I didn't show you the picture of the woman reenacting uh, what she saw the ghost mm. do. That's a picture of a woman looking at a fire, James. Listeners, it's a, it's a woman sitting down looking at a very small fireplace and you have submitted this let me remind you in the category of pizzazz james you fool that has no two pizzazz bar fire two bar electric fire she's staring at it's the least pizzazzy model in the range that is britain in the 60s that image but nobody wants that there's no showmanship involved there but on the other hand mm-hmm. picking up two candles fling them across the room there's a real sense of fun involved there hilarious a lot of fun a lot of fun stealing yes. cufflinks it's very you've been framed I think it's I think it's a four out of five. Yes. yes. I wow. think we'd better oh. settle for that before we get knocked down. Sorry, Chanel shook his fist in the air with uh, what seems to have been joy, but As if I, I was alarmed because yeah. I've never seen him express an emotion that intensely. <laughs> You've never seen me win four points like that before. <laughs> <laughs> I realise your description of professional gambler is so close to my understanding of poor person. Absolutely. Slippers on, pop into the shops. <laughs> Pensively yeah. staring at a two bar fire. <laughs> Like yeah. a ghost. But that ghost probably was going like, what is this? An electric fire? I've never seen it. He was really amazed by the futuristic technology of the fire. <laughs> so, Sunil, um, do, you, do, you want to, do you want to plug your yeah. podcast? Because I feel like the people who you get off the back of this might be the wrong sort. There's no such thing as the wrong sort. Let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can our listeners find you? You can find me on um, Instagram, at Sunil Patel Solutions. <laughs> and also you can, uh, my podcast is uh, why is Harriet crying I have that with Harriet Kemsley uh, and uh, I'm on the radio uh, BBC Asian Network every Saturday Ooh. that's what it's all about these days yeah I mean you've sound, made that sound really unimpressive but um, <laughs> so it's actually got a fine body of work you can see me on Netflix on two series of a nice. called Borderline very nice it's a good series I'm actually the thumbnail oh yeah Ooh. but it, unfortunately it comes up it comes up under the category of lovable losers <laughs> This is a picture of me holding a holding a frozen chicken at the top of a stepladder. I do have a habit of making this sound bleaker than it is. 
<laughs> and maybe, fingers crossed, you'll see me in the role of stupid man on toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real humble brag. The, the picture of me on Netflix is unflattering. Yes, that's true. That is true. But do listen to our podcast, Why Is Harriet Crying? Uh, uh, if you enjoy podcasts. They've got to. To be listening this far, <laughs> you have got to really be into the whole genre of podcasts. <laughs> You've been listening to Lawmen with me, Alistair Beckett King. And me, James Shakeshaft. And this coming Sunday, the 30th of August, 2020, in the year 2020, you know, the worst year, we will be doing a live stream about Edinburgh with guest law person Eleanor Morton. Yes. We were very sad that we didn't get to go to the Edinburgh Fringe, and so we brought Edinburgh to us. Yeah. Well, we're talking about it in a podcast. It's not exactly the same as the largest arts festival in the world but if you'd like to support this frivolous nonsense you can sling us a few doubloons at ko-fi.com forward slash lawmen alistair yes james i've got an email from a lady called stephanie her partner chris it's their birthday. It's Chris's birthday. Yes, on the 1st of September. And they did a road trip that seemed to end up being a road trip around a lot of the places that we talked about over the series of Lawman. And Chris made Stephanie listen to all the episodes. Wow. And as a sort of revenge, she's got us to give him birthday wishes. I wonder what that sounded like. I don't know. Press, press play on the thing. So, Chris. Chris. Is this how you're spending your birthday? Just driving around, visiting haunted spots. Uh, to be honest, that sounds amazing. Have a really good time. Yeah, that does sound reasonable. You've you've really, in the tone of your voice, James, you've implied that that's a bad way to spend your birthday. But it actually sounds great. No, it's great. great. Well done, Chris. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I would like to say, from the information we have, um, like, don't make Stephanie listen to the podcasts you like. Don't force her through 50 episodes of this rubbish. Just let her be her own person, please. You've done 50 of these. 54. 54. Chris, that's uh, Sunil Patel is oh. here. Would you like to w- wish Chris a happy birthday, hey, Chris. Sunil? Chris, happy birthday and congratulations for listening to 54 episodes of Lawmen. Could you could you try and say that again, but with uh, any sense of commitment? And I'll edit out the previous one. <laughs> Chris, happy, happy birthday. <laughs> and uh, congratulations for listening to 54 <laughs> episodes of Lawmen. I uh, hope it That's... was a normal speed and not 1.2, which is how I prefer to listen to these. <laughs> I mean, if anything, it came out more sarcastic. It's 53 and two thirds more episodes than you've listened to, <laughs> Sunil. Oh, what a burn. Chris, yeah, you've. Because I'm saying you only listen to your own voice on your own episode. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I haven't. I don't like listening to my own voice. And. Um, I don't listen to myself when I talk either, so I've I've listened to minus. (laughs) You've really brought mime into the podcast world. (laughs) Do you listen to your podcast yourselves, guys? Big time. My favourite. So, as in, like, to learn and improve? No, it's never occurred to me. I I just bask in my own glory. (laughs) I think I listen to my Bon Mots, and I think, yeah, that was a Bon Mot, actually. Chris, do... Is Chris still listening? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, this is still Chris's birthday message. Chris, do do let them know if you appreciate their bon mots. <laughs> I think without any listener feedback, the bon yeah, mots are they bon mots? Exactly. Are they just uh, sava mots? Mots. Are, are they, they mal mots? Are they? <laughs> How, we can't mad say. Mad mots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you want um, is a mad mo. Should we right. sing a little happy birthday? Are we singing it? Oh, I think it's going to be do difficult. It. I'll okay, lead it. it. Lead it, Sunil. Uh, okay. All right. After three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Chris. dear Chris. Happy birthday, baby. <laughs> happy birthday to. Oh, I can't wake up the baby, actually. What are you doing to me? <laughs> Go wake up the baby. Tell it it's Chris's birthday. See it? Oh, I thought that was just something like a hype man would say. <laughs> like, you're going to wake up the baby. I thought it was just a phrase <laughs> from, from the popular oh, music. I'm going to wake up the baby in a minute. Oh, you're going to wake up the baby. <laughs> right, Sunil's yawning. We better wrap it up. Right. Happy birthday, Chris. Oh, cheers, yeah, Chris. Chris. <laughs> Good one. All right. Stop recording that. Stop recording that.